My journey into sports psychology started when I first started playing sports in elementary school. Both my parents played sport when they were growing up, and they encouraged me to play sports. They both emphasized that the most important skills for me to be successful and to enjoy the experience were mental skills. My mom used to say what I focused on and what my attitude was determined my success. She would emphasize to me to have good practices. You need to focus on the moment and go all out. I bought into this even though I didn't know about sports psychology, and I believed that mental skills were the most important ones. When I entered high school, I played football, basketball, and ran track. I started reading about mental skills and working on developing them. I also talked to my teammates about mental skills and encouraged them to use them. And also my high school coaches emphasized the importance of mental skills. And even though they didn't know about sports psychology and they weren't aware of the profession, they emphasized using the mental skills. When I entered college, I played football and ran track. I increased my reading of articles and books about mental skills and about the psychology of mental performance in sport. And I became aware of the field of sports psychology and that there were professions where people worked with the mental aspect of sport. That sports psychology, psychology, excuse me, worked with teams and individual athletes in mental training. I began to think that I could, this could be something that I might like to do. While in college, I practiced my mental skills on a daily basis. I talked to my coaches and I talked to my teammates about the importance of mental skills. And I really encouraged uh, the teammates to use the mental skills. And I received positive feedback from both the coaches and from the athletes. Uh, when I graduated from college, I was going to dental school but I was offered the head football and track and field coaching positions and also a teaching position at the school where I graduated from. And I took the position, but I told the principal that I would be leaving in March to go to dental school. Now, I began right away working with my athletes uh, on the mental training program. I would talk to, to you shortly about the specific ways I incorporate these mental skills into coaching. I also continued to read and research uh, about mental training. I loved coaching and teaching, and I decided that this was going to be my profession so I didn't go to dental school. I stayed at my high school for two years, and then I decided I needed more coaching knowledge. And so I took an assistant coaching position at a boys prep school in both football and track and field, and I also taught. Two years later, I took the head football and track coaching positions at another school and I continued high school football and track and field and taught classes for seven years. And during that time, I continued to teach mental skills to my team. All right, in 1971, I received a great opportunity. I was um, hired as the head football coach and track and field and cross country coach at James Madison University. It was Madison at that time. I started the track and field and cross country in 1971. And in 1972, I started the football program. And I coached the football and the track and field programs for four years and continued to coach the track and field, excuse me, the football until 19. 85. 
And during those years, I continued to study mental training material, attend clinics, and make mental training an important part of my coaching. I also decided that when I stopped coaching, I would take the steps to become a sports psychologist and a university professor. I had two major goals. One was to work with coaches, teams, and individual athletes in mental training in, in developing their mental skills to become the best they could be both in sport and out of sport. And the other goal was as a college professor to teach sports psychology courses and to develop a coaching education program. I stepped down from coaching after 1984 football season and had a commitment from James Madison University that if I received my doctorate in sports psychology that I would be hired as a full-time faculty member in the kinesiology department and a sports psychologist to develop a sports psych program that would work with JMU athletic coaches, athletic teams, and individual athletes. I met at that time with Dr. Bob Rotello, the head of the uh, sports psych program at the University of Virginia. I did that in the winter of 1984. And he encouraged me to become a sports psychologist and, uh, to, uh, and he helped me also to uh, get into the University of Virginia sports psych program. He was a very successful sports psychologist. He is well known and respected even today in, in, in sports psychology and he works with many coaches and teams and individuals. I had a number of classes with him and I met with him on a regular basis all during my time at UVA and I still stay in contact with him. I had a number of great professors at, at uh, UVA, and so I learned a lot in terms of sports psychology. And one of them was Dr. Linda Bunker, who uh, now is retired, but she was a, an outstanding teacher, made all kinds of uh, presentations in clinics and at professional organizations, and was really highly respected by the uh, professional organizations in sports psychology. Now during my study at UVA, I not only did classwork, but I did research, I made presentations at clinics, I attended clinics, and I worked with athletic teams, worked with individual athletes, and did part-time teaching at JMU. I graduated from UVA in 1990 and returned to JMU as a professor in the kinesiology department. And I taught graduate and undergraduate courses. Most of those classes that I taught with dealt with coaching, psychological and sociological issues in sport and leadership. And during this time, I let the coaches know that I was willing to work with them, their teams and their individual athletes in mental training. And I started then working with them. I also started doing mental training clinics for youth sport and high school coaches in this area. I made presentations at Aford and Vapored, and uh, I uh, offered professional organizations on sports psychology mental training. Um, I then worked with uh, AFERD and developed a coaching education program for schools and organizations that provide uh, sports programs. And I was the first president of the National Council for the Accreditation of Coaching Education. Through this organization, schools and coaching organizations could get their coaching education programs certified. And today, most of the high schools uh, require that their coaches have coaching certification. So I was very, very happy to be able to, to do that. I also began to develop the Macmillan Sports Site program as an emphasis at, at, at JMU. 
And two of my former athletes, Joe Shoker and Rodney Kibler, funded the Macmillan Sports Act program. And this enabled JMU to uh, provide uh, sports psych training for all the coaches and athletes here at the, at the university. It also enabled us to bring in uh, a, an extra uh, department member and uh, some graduate students to help us work. And the first uh, one to come in was Wendy Ballaby, who is a full-time sports psychologist. And, and she um, and I worked together to work with all the athletes, the athletic teams, the coaches. We provided clinics and all kinds of information and work with the uh, athletes. And, and uh, she then left to go back into sport, the, the major sports psych organization. And in 2007, Dr. Bob Harmerson joined the JMU athletic department staff as the director of sports psychology. In addition, he was appointed as an associate professor and the Kibler Chair in Sports Psychology in the Department of Graduate Psychology. And Dr. Harmon, Harmerson is still the director of the Macmillan Sports Psych Program. The Sports Psychology Program at JMU also provides the Chalice Joe Macmillan Center for Sports Psychology, which offers programs in Virginia designed or designated to educate athletes coaches and parents how mental skills can increase the performance on and off the field of play. It provides mental training for all sports, skill levels, and ages. It also brings in a sports psychology speaker for the Macmillan Shoker Speaker Forum each year. And this speaker uh, presents to all JMU athletic teams, coaches, and athletic administrators. In 2005, I retired from the kinesiology department and was hired by the JMU athletic department to continue to work as a sports psychologist with our athletic program and the Chalice Joe McMillan Center for Sports Psychology. I continued that work until January 2015. I still volunteer to work with individuals and some teams in mental training.